This is America Today. Competition is part of our society in America today. Hello, I'm Neil Brown. There are some individuals who are so competitive, they enjoy playing war games on the weekend. They dress as soldiers and use weapons which look real. Photographer Brian Sullivan and reporter Henry Eaton take us to Wyndham, New Hampshire for an inside look at the folks who play the survival game and why they do it. This is a game of firepower. You know, I mean, the most pain tell us at the point of attack is what wins this. Three, two, one, go. Into the heat of battle they go, adrenaline shooting a powerful mix of fear and excitement through their veins. Who are these weekend warriors and why are they here? Well, they're just about anyone you can imagine, and they've come to play the survival game. Moving straight in underneath the swamp. You stay with Benji. You want to run this? This is part of your plan. Do right. you, you want to run it? All right, yeah. Run the side, then. Benji! Yeah! Over there! I just what? The concept is simple. Capture the flag meets cops and robbers. The object of the game is to capture the flag. The opposing team's flag. Uh, <laughs> and return it to your flag station without being painted. One direct hit on anything that you're wearing or carrying will take you out of the game. So a splash off a tree doesn't count. If the paintball doesn't break, it doesn't count. It has to be a direct hit. Here's how it works. There are two teams, each with a flag. Each team infiltrates the other's territory to capture the enemy flag and bring it back home, all the while defending its own turf and protecting its own flag. The winning team must control both flags. Anyone hit with a paintball in the process is dead, hands up and out of the woods. Games can last up to an hour. If teams exchange flags or neither flag is captured, the winner is determined by body count. It's a game of strategy. The basic principle is kill or be killed. Yep. Get you started anyhow. If you need extras, just come back. We'll keep a tab on your arms. On this day, about 150 people have come to play. Most are first or second timers not yet drawn in to the point of investing in all the trappings of the more dedicated veteran players. For $25, you get to play all day, four or five games. And you get basic equipment, guns, goggles, and enough CO2 and ammunition to get started. $5 more, and you're outfitted in a set of camouflaged fatigues, camos as they're called. Outside, there's a bullseye target and a likeness of Libyan leader Muammar Gaddafi. Good practice for players, great business for the franchise. Paint goes for $2 a tube. The colonel wears a lot of it. Paintballs are the size of a big marble, washable paint in soft wax. The basic rental gun is a CO2-powered pistol, a Splatmaster or a Nelspot 007. The hardcore, like this twosome from a team called the Widowmakers, carry their own, more sophisticated weapons. It's the PMI Sheraton, the long nose. It's the best gun on the market right now. With the gravity feed and the uh, stock, it makes it very accurate and a very fast-firing weapon. And this is the weapon of the Widowmakers. The Widowmakers. Yeah, that's bad. <laughs> it's impossible to pin a label on the people who play this game. There are men whose middle age shows from the belt line up to the beard, and slender young women whose beauty can't be shrouded. There's this guy, a cross between G.I. Joe and the Marlboro Man. They're among an estimated 200,000 fun seekers who take to battlefields around the country on any given weekend. The yellow flag has been lifted. It's on its way back. What's the status of the orange flag? Paul Rubito and a partner own this franchise of the National Survival Game. Rubito is also part of a 15-member team of expert players who claim this park as home base. They're called the Wild Geese. At a tournament in Pennsylvania last summer, the geese outpainted all comers to win the North American Championship. Right on the board, you! Push right on the board, George! Hang there! Rob, Roy! You and Mike, I want you to swing around. Six! 
Go with him. On weekends, the geese divide up and play alongside the walk-ons, or mercenaries, as the occasional players are called. I used to play a lot of golf, and I used to hunt, but I love this game. Oh, you go out here and you hunt, and uh, they're hunting you. It's great. Love it. Good way to get rid of all your tension that you build up during the week at work. Yeah. And it's super. Yeah, we love it. We're all hooked bad. <laughs> Clear to the I was wall. supposed to go to a wedding this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. It's totally innocent fun. It's uh, it's, it's totally non-serious. It's uh, real teamwork. It's sort of like chess in the woods. You go around, you try to find the other team, and, and, and you know, you do a lot of shooting and yelling and screaming and hollering, and and uh, afterwards you get to have a lot of fun, too, because you get to swap lies and stories with people and, uh, you know, about the 35,000 guys you shot last game and that kind of thing. You know, it's a good time. You get some people that get a little bit aggressive, but it's, it's that's not the tone of the game. That's not what's stress. It's, it's teamwork and... You know, people who haven't played it are the ones that think it's it, it's too violent. Jack O'Donnell is a mercenary who plays about once a month. I think a lot of people, you know, have a problem like dealing with fear and so forth, and um, and maybe I do to a certain degree. And I think this helps. You know, you know, it's like a, the football game. You know, when the the whistle blows, you you know, you get all the butterflies and a certain amount of fear, and then as soon as you make the first contact, or you're you're marked here the first time, and out that's all gone. Now you just want to play. You know. It's an interesting. It's really interesting. Take three guys, and once you go out that way, get a hundred guys or ladies, yards. please. <laughs> this is not a sport reserved only for men. Women are enlisting in growing numbers. It's a very high adrenaline game. Very exciting game. It is. What's the, what's the most exciting aspect of it for you? When you shoot someone, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> when you finally stalk and you finally get somebody to kill, and they have to walk out of the game. Yeah, that's definitely the best part. <laughs> Kill anybody in the process? I did. <laughs> a few people. That was the best part. <laughs> All guys. <laughs> I've never shot a female. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's not that many to shoot. <laughs> yeah, we stick together and we do shoot up guys. <laughs> anybody that's ever played the survival game before will tell you it's definitely not a spectator sport. The only way to experience what this game is all about is to play it. And that's what we're going to do. Right, Keith? Yeah! yeah! As you charge into the fray, dodging paintballs, hiding behind trees, taking aim at an enemy who's probably a lot like you, the thought arises, we do indeed live in a dangerous world. A world full of fear and uncertainty, violence and hatred. Out here in this jungle of make-believe, you can simulate that danger and confront it head on. With cunning, patience, a little luck, and a lot of help from your friends, you can even overcome it and have fun along the way. Too bad it's only a game. The survival game. One way to take out frustrations and have some fun doing it. Maybe there's a little bit of Rambo in all of us. Thanks for being with us on this edition of America Today. We hope to see you again soon. I'm Neil Brown. This has been a presentation of the Gannett Broadcasting Group in association with the Gannett Company Incorporated.